you're not going out in the barn and, and milking the cow and then you're drinking the milk. Today, uh, and the cow you know, had fed on, uh, organically uh, on grass, uh, we're looking at a different animal today. It's an industrial uh, product. Uh, and uh, the, uh, for example, the, an organically fed cow, for example, used to produce about a gallon and a half of milk a day. Uh, now a cow produces six gallons of milk a day. How is that possible? Well, for one thing, they put it in a cage, and you go to a dairy farm, and they may have 500 or so cows all penned up in their stall, can't move around, don't go in the pasture. Sometimes it's as many as 2,000, and they want their production to go up. So what do they do? Uh, they give it hormones. They use pesticides to uh, kill uh, the bugs that are, are bo bothering them. They don't want them to move. They don't want to swap uh, and use up uh, energy. They're even, even giving them hormones to, make, uh, to increase the milk production, which can be done uh, through recombinant growth hormone uh, that they give uh, uh, the animals. And of course, uh, when you drink the milk, you're uh, uh, drinking that. So what is the healthiest? Uh, okay. Mother's milk. Your own mother's milk is the healthiest, not the milk of another animal. No animal besides us drinks the milk of another animal. We have 5,400 different animals that produce milk, and, and each milk for each animal is different. It has different carbohydrates, different proteins, uh, different sugars, and is designed for that infant. So we are drinking the milk of a cow that is totally differently designed than mother's milk. The best thing a mother can do for her child to build the biggest brain, a brain has 60% has fat, omega-3s. This is type of fat is especially made by a mother. So the best thing you do for your child, breastfeed it for the first two years. Most mothers are, are too busy, don't have the time. Some just choose not to. Average length of time that mothers uh, might breastfeed is a matter of, of, a f of a few months. But that is the best for the most brain growth, uh, growth for your child. Also affects eventually uh, what a child may eat, uh, for example. So it has a great effect. So the best milk for your child clearly is mother's milk, your own, your own milk, uh, uh, not milk uh, that was designed uh, for a calf. It's totally different, uh, fat content, protein content. Uh, and uh, uh, so we're looking at in industrial uh, milk that has been, and the cows have been, they've had pesticides used on them, herbicides, hormones, uh, the feed that they give them. Uh, uh, okay has been affected genetically. It's a different corn, different type of wheat uh, that the effect has been genetically modified. Uh, so uh, milk has in it, for example, about 54 hormones. Some of their own, some of them were given to the cow, uh, and this is what uh, you're drinking. And of course, this will have an effect on you, and we'll speak more about that. In 1970, uh, we are consuming about 25 gallons of milk a year. It's gone down quite a bit because of some publicity. You know, we talk about the fat in milk, you know, and then it's 2%, then 1%. Now it's uh, skim, for example. Now we're down to about six gallons, okay? So it is indeed going down. The problem that was happening is these milk products uh, uh, have been switched to cheese. A cheese consumption went up while a milk consumption went down. Uh, but these dairy products carry a great deal of fat, a great deal of chemicals, herbicides, and hormones. So uh, a lot of cheese is 80% fat. We'll speak more about cheese uh, uh, later. Uh, and uh, whole milk you know, is a good 50% uh, uh, fat. 2% uh, milk uh, isn't 2% fat. Uh, it's about 38% fat. Uh, and 1% and, uh, milk uh, isn't 1% one, 1 fat. Yeah, it's about 26% fat. Uh, so uh, the fat content of uh, 
all milk is, is, is quite uh, high. Uh, and uh, let's look at the health of our nation. It's not great. We're running, we have one of the highest rates of obesity in the world. We have the highest rate of cancer. We have the highest uh, rate of heart disease, vascular disease, autoimmune disease. It's because of the food that, that we're eating. Mexico just passed us in the obesity rate. Uh, and uh, you notice if you saw in the press, they put a 10% uh, tax on uh, fructose corn syrup soda drinks and 8% on fast food. Myself, my opinion is that's not high enough to alter behavior, but it may be the start of things because they're having a huge problem. Their type 2 diabetes rate, uh, which is uh, r related a lot to being overweight, uh, uh, is exceeding ours. Korea's is going up, South Vietnam's is going up. So. Uh, sugar consumption, fat consumption, we have to pay attention to. Uh, we spend now 17% of gross domestic product on health care, highest in the world, but yet we are rated by the World Health Organization in certain categories like number 37, like number 37. Yes, the number one health care system in the world uh, is France, according to the World Health Organization. So we're working, and I'm working on trying to change this, but we all must participate in this because we can avoid these illnesses by uh, proper eating. Uh, so when the milk consumption went down, cheese consumption went up. Uh, and the Food and Drug Administration in the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the uh, hu Human uh, Health Service Administration, then cahoots uh, with the drug companies, the farming system, these people pay a lot of money for lobbying, and the laws they've been passing are very soft. Although today, make my day, I pick up the New York Times, and, and one of the headlines in there is that the government is going to very strictly uh, regulate the amount of antibiotics that you can give to pigs, pigs chickens, uh, and beef. But the problem with that is they did that in Europe. They did that in Europe, so you can't, you can't give it uh, to uh, uh, promote uh, uh, growth, for example. Uh, 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 and what they found, that these, the farmers, pharmaceutical companies, adjusted themselves in, in Europe, uh, and, and, and they'll claim they're giving the antibiotics for infections, not to promote the growth of the animal, uh, and that law in Europe didn't change things much. So my enthusiasm uh, may be, as I read further in the article, may be damped a little bit. But again, at least somebody's uh, looking at it. Uh, and uh, we spend today $2.8 trillion in health care, and it's going to go up. Uh, and we, we're our, we have an increasing rate uh, of uh, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, cancer, shooting straight up. And a, and a significant amount of this is uh, related uh, to uh, what we're eating uh, uh, and uh, anything uh, very sugary uh, or uh, fat consumption. Uh, I think to consume fat is fine. We need some essential uh, fat. But if we're overweight, it's not fine because it's caloric dense. You're going to get uh, heavier. Uh, and the chemicals that fat makes uh, make, make us sick, cause cancer, cause heart disease, vascular disease. So we need to watch our intake of, of fat, although fat is not, not thought to be quite the enemy compared to the fructose from sugar. I mean, I think that the arrow is pointing the fructose uh, from sugar going to the liver, making low density, uh, making very low density LDL as being the real culprit. Uh, but like I said, if you're overweight, fat consumption has to be watched. Uh, and uh, and, and a, federal, a federal government, Food and Drug Administration, uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture, uh, is too soft on these people. It's the lobbying money in Congress. It's Congress uh, that's really uh, uh, doing it. Uh, let's look at the cheese story, uh, for example. Uh, the uh, cheese sort of became an industrial product uh, uh, when a man named Kraft, F. Kraft Foods, they're the main che uh, cheese company, uh, the, figured out they could uh, sell this product across the country and it's been modified. As a matter of fact, if you take cheese and sugar, 
uh, and, and eat it and then take functional MRI scans to look at the brain at the serotonin dopamine circuitry, the circuitry where we tell what things are addictive and make us feel good. The brain just lights up. We put fat in there and sugar in there, our brain just lights up. So whenever the government passes laws that reduce the sugar content, uh, industry right away inc increases the cheese content, fat content, the cheese uh, content, and the whole brain lights up again. So we have to be aware of that. I'm just trying to, edu to educate you uh, on this. And uh, we consume about 30 ounces of milk and cheese uh, a day, about 600 pounds yearly. Yeah. And that wouldn't be any problem if, if we didn't have this 70, 80 uh, percent uh, obesity rate uh, in this nation causing disease. We don't care about the obesity. It's, it's, it's fat has, makes 20 nasty chemicals, cytokines, that affect our health. Uh, uh, from cancer to dementia to chronic diseases. That's the reason we care about it. We don't care about the obesity. We care about what the fat is doing to, to us because this fat is not sitting under your skin on your belly. It's in your liver, affecting your uh, metabolism. That's why it's important. A glass of milk uh, has about 250 calories, okay? About 7.5 grams of fat. That's quite a bit of uh, uh, fat. Uh, and uh, and you know, we, I need my milk because I, I have to get my calcium. Actually, uh, this is not true, and you'll learn through this hour uh, that you can get calcium from plants, from sesame seeds, from broccoli, from cauliflower. Uh, you, you don't need it for milk. As a matter of fact, the calcium from milk is not well absorbed. Uh, uh, and uh, so our health information uh, uh, isn't that the best? You know, schools were pushing milk. It's less. The pushing is less. But if you look at the uh, latest uh, health plate the uh, government is putting out, uh, uh, Michelle Obama put it out, and, uh, and we're glad that she did, she did something. But you notice there is milk on there. And I personally think it should be uh, uh, a glass of water uh, 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 myself. Uh, so it's, it's been tainted advice we're getting from the National Dairy Council, National Dairy uh, Promotion Council, Research Council, the Dairy Management and Company, that th they are passing out and advertising on TV uh, uh, information that isn't totally uh, correct. I think what we need on their boards, which I guarantee you isn't it there, there need to be half women. They need to have some mothers on there. Uh, so the, they need to be people outside the industry that have children that or, or going to have children should be on these boards that then make the decision how healthy milk really is. Uh, when the industrial complex and their money and their lobbying money are making these huge decisions, uh, I think we have to be suspect about what they're telling us. And uh, for example, the American Dairy Council passed a resolution advertised that everybody needs milk. That's false. After age two, you don't need milk. You don't need it. Uh, and uh, a matter of fact, the human body is so designed, uh, the protein in milk uh, called lactose, the enzyme for that goes away after age four. Yeah, goes away after age four. Uh, so uh, there really uh, isn't any reason, just to put a little humor in here, that we need to uh, ourselves get under a cow and milk it three times a day we can't seem to wean away uh, from the cow when every other animal does. The elephant doesn't drink the milk of, an, of another animal. We are the only ones drinking the milk of another animal. That milk was designed for a calf. It was not designed for us. We need to get away from it. Uh, and the sales uh, have been going, the amount of milk we're drinking has been going down, as I already mentioned already. You know, 1966, uh, about 35 gallons a year. 1997, 26 gallons. 2004, 23 gallons. I think it continues to go down because people uh, are learning uh, 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 that. And, and let's talk about the milk content a little bit. It has some protein in it. It's called lactose. It's a protein, and, ha and it has to uh, be digested uh, by lactase and enzyme. The only trouble is uh, that uh, about 75% of the uh, black community doesn't have the enzyme for it. 
so it causes indigestion and, 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 it, 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 and it's not healthy uh, for them. 100% of the Asians uh, don't tolerate lactose. Yeah. Well, it wasn't designed for them. And, uh, and, and among white people, it's about 50% causing abdominal ap uh, 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 rashes, eczema, uh, colitis, uh, all sorts of uh, illnesses. Uh, and, uh, and we don't look for that uh, allergy. Uh, it's, it's not an allergy, it's a, it's a lack of that enzyme, actually, although milk uh, ha has a lot of allergies attached to it, and we will discuss those. The physician study group came out with, in 2001, came out with a study, uh, and number one is they wanted uh, people to know that milk should not be a sports drink. It's not something we're racing or something. We have in our kids in high school the football game that we should give them a glass of milk. We know that that doesn't happen much anymore. Uh, uh, number two is it does not prevent osteoporosis. You know, osteoporosis being soft bones. And I'm going to go across that in, in, in much more detail in a little bit here. Uh, and uh, and uh, the, the fat in milk has been well proven now uh, can cause vascular disease, strokes, heart disease, autoimmune disease, allergic reactions, which I'll go over in a little bit. Uh, prostate cancer, for example, is associated uh, with milk products. It may just be the fat in the milk. We don't know exactly the reason, uh, but we do know uh, that uh, uh, people with prostate cancer are much uh, more, more uh, milk drinkers. And uh, here they studied uh, 7,000 to 8,000 women uh, and found uh, the, the women who consumed milk had a higher rate uh, of osteoporosis and cancer. My friend, Dr. Rudolph, a pediatrician, he, who knows a great deal about nutrition, he, he calls milk liquid meat. He calls it liquid meat. Interesting. I think we learned that from Dr. Furman, I think. And uh, so pediatricians uh, studied this, came out with, they summarized 58 uh, studies uh, and found uh, no relationship between drinking milk and good health, uh, and that it, it did not promote bone health. Uh, and so they reviewed uh, uh, 58 uh, studies. Uh, a lot of this information I got out of a book called Whitewash, Whitewash uh, by Joseph Keon, K-E-O-N. You can go Amazon Books or some, order the book, uh, wouldn't cost very much. And, and they're the scientific papers proving what I'm saying. Everything I'm saying is based on scientific proof. Uh, uh, to, to read more about it, and I encourage you uh, to, uh, to do that. And as I already mentioned, these 5,400 animals, their milk is their carbohydrates, their protein, their fat, especially designed for their, uh, for their youngsters. A rat, for example, uh, has much more protein in it uh, than uh, human milk. A rat can, can double in size four days, <laughs> four days. Uh, a human, an infant, uh, again, has a certain amount of fat in it, uh, and uh, it doubles in size in about 180 days, okay? And, and, uh, and the amount of fat in human milk, about 5% uh, on, whole, on, on whole milk, a cow is, uh, uh, a dog is about 30%, so kind of interesting figures to know. Uh, 100 grams of milk have about, uh, a cow has, has about 4 grams of protein. Uh, 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 human milk uh, that we feed our babies have about 1.1 grams of protein, so it's different. We're giving more protein, more casein, uh, to whoever is drinking milk, and, and protein can have effects on your body. Uh, can cause inflammation, can cause cancer, uh, has uh, some chemicals in it that even affect the brain, affect your appetite. Uh, and uh, foods are absorbed differently. Plants have plenty of protein in it. Brussels sprouts, uh, the, the calcium in that is absorbed, 60, 63% is absorbed. Bro broccoli, 83% is absorbed. Sesame seeds is a plant with the highest calcium content. Sprinkle on your salad, you get a plenty of calcium. Well, no one knows exactly how much calcium we need a day. Maybe it's around 500 milligrams. Actually, they found African women who have almost no osteoporotic fractures. Uh, they, uh, they consume about 200 milligrams of calcium a day. Yeah, uh, and we're, uh, we're consuming much more than what we need. So we don't need to drink milk to get our calcium. And, uh, uh, 
in a whole, mil whole milk a glass, you know, it's at about 250 calories. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, Nathan Pritikin, you may have heard of him, he was the original veg vegetarian, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago. He published uh, quite a bit on that. He says one of the most dangerous foods are dairy products. Yeah, yeah. And he, he relates illnesses that appear to be related to it, acne. Uh, we talked about vascular disease, uh, 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 cancer, prostate cancer, ovarian ca uh, uh, cancer, breast cancer, 30% rate or so associated with fat. And it could just be the fat from the milk that's doing it. Uh, no one knows the exact product, uh, but it could be just the, the, the fat from that. And uh, if you want your kid to be overweight, uh, feed them out of milk. It'll do it. It, it will do it. And, and, and a lot of people don't know that. I played tennis with a very nice gentleman last night, and, and their mother uh, uh, I did not know that. And I don't blame her. I mean, we, I, I don't know everything. Uh, and that's the reason for the show. And, and she was giving the kids a lot of uh, 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 milk products, so the children of normal weight. But it, 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 to me, that would be dangerous. And uh, there are 60 different hormones in cow's milk. Can you, can you imagine that? 60 different hormones, from hypothalamic hormones, thyroid hormones, uh, adrenal gland hormones, growth hormones. Uh, yes, you can see how dangerous it really is. Uh, uh, and in cow's milk is to IGF-1, which is a cancer growth factor uh, and makes the cells grow, makes them divide. Uh, and that's the reason I think we have this, this, uh, this milk or fat uh, cancer linked. Uh, cancer linked. And we already talked quite a bit about this, the cheese story, uh, how that uh, uh, exploded uh, in this country. Uh, I mean, and, and cheese can be addictive. There are some people uh, that are addicted to cheese. It's the, uh, some chemicals in there that, that hit the dopamine circuitry. I mean, you eat cheese, your brain lights up. Could it just be the fat? Yeah, it could just be the fat. Uh, 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 and, uh, but it's interesting, some people are just literally addicted to it. Gotta have, if it's in the house, they've got to eat it. And uh, so you have to watch out for that, and you're going to gain a lot of weight. Uh, and we, uh, uh, and uh, milk can cause allergies, uh, allergies, rashes, swelling, watery eyes, ear infections, asthma, uh, uh, ulcerative colitis, ulcerative colitis, for example, so, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, a certain amount is related indeed uh, uh, to milk. Uh, and we already mentioned heart disease uh, and because of the saturated fat uh, and the low density LDL that burrows into our vessels causing arterial sclerosis. Uh, Walter Willer from Harvard, very famous, written many books on proper eating. Um, uh, he quotes the seven country study, the 32 country study, and Lancet. These are all articles uh, well referenced in this book I showed you uh, that if you want, want to read these articles uh, themselves, uh, uh, relating uh, fat and milk and, and, and also uh, the lactose, the protein uh, of milk uh, causing allergies uh, and, and, uh, and disease. Uh, whole milk is a good 50% fat uh, and 2% uh, fat. Milk isn't 2% fat, it's about 38% fat. And uh, so 2% milk, it doesn't do you much good. 1% is better. Uh, skim milk, uh, but you're still going to get the casein. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and no fat milk, you may not get any fat, but you're still going to get the casein and the reactions uh, to that in your body. You have to remember that. I think the best thing, drink water with some lemon and lime. That's healthy for your child. And I noticed when I, uh, I'm reading a book right now, which uh, frankly I liked, uh, called The Daniel Plan uh, by Reverend w the Reverend Warren, and, and, and uh, 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 he noticed members in the church were having a weight problem, and he did something about it. I wrote a wonderful book with Dr. Amon, Dr. Hyman, uh, co-authors, about a third through the book, uh, a great book, and he, he speaks about this uh, in, in, in his uh, uh, books. I think, actually, I, I, I kind of like that book, uh, and uh, because the way he's teaching a way to eat, you know, 80% plant diet, 20% uh, uh, lean meat, I could go along with that. You're going to be healthy if you do, if you do that. Another study done by pediatricians uh, in the archives of pediatrics uh, studied 12,000 children, 9 to 14, every state in the nation, 
and, and they clearly linked uh, milk with, with uh, obesity. Also, the type 1 diabetic rate is higher in milk drinkers, and that's a serious problem, probably because of allergies, autoimmune reaction, destroys the pancreas, whatever. But the type 1 diabetic rate is higher uh, in, in, uh, in, in, in children who are milk drinkers. So uh, uh, at least my friend Dr. Rulo, pediatrician in town here, clearly says a child shouldn't drink milk after age two. Uh, after all my reading of Dr. Atwood's work and these work, I, I would tend to agree to it. And uh, uh, also, uh, milk has been related uh, to Crohn's disease. When they uh, culture out uh, uh, the bacteria and viruses uh, in the, the bowel of uh, 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 Crohn's uh, disease, uh, for example, they come up with uh, a, a bacteria called paratuberculosis, uh, and, and, and it's found almost in every one of these patients with bowel disease. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, a chronic infection, and, and, and most of these were milk drinkers. It's kind of interesting. Not as 100% scientific proof, uh, but you know it's there. Uh, and, the, and the hormones that we were speaking about earlier in milk, uh, uh, these are bioactive hormones. They're going to do something in the body. They're going to do something in the body when you reach a certain critical level. I mean, a certain amount of it may just be a contaminant. No one knows for certain exactly what these 50, actually 59 hormones uh, and chemicals uh, do. You mentioned a certain level they act. Uh, uh, they take a long time to excrete, for example. Uh, for exa let's go through the hormones. Eight, eight pituitary hormones, seven hypothalamic hormones, six thyroid hormones, 11 growth hormones, estrogen, testosterone. That, that's what you uh, are drinking uh, when you drink milk. I don't think that's necessarily good. Uh, as another doctor said, cow's milk is a cocktail of hormones, a cocktail of hormones, which can affect or cause the metabolism of your whole body. Affects the metabolism of your whole body. Uh, and they have found recurrent bovine growth hormone in there, which they give to the cows to make them grow, to produce more milk, uh, so that they can get more product out and uh, make more, uh, more money. That's what they give to cows. And of course, this is what you're drinking, uh, uh, too. And uh, they are even milking pregnant cows with all the hormonal changes they have. This is what you're going to feed to your child or yourself drink. Uh, I think uh, I'd be informed about that. Uh, and and uh, in IGF-1, we spoke about this insulin growth factor, which causes uh, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and stimulates cell division, is found uh, uh, in, in uh, uh, milk. Uh, let's speak about uh, ovarian cancer a, a, a little bit. They've done studies, and they found that a Harvard Public Health study found that the, even on, on a low-fat skim milk diet, they found a 44 to 66 percent increase risk in ovarian cancer. Wow, that's impressive. The Iowa Health Study: 29,000 people, postmenopause uh, women, uh, uh, and published in the American Journal of Nutrition. Uh, uh, also, uh, where they studied uh, people for for over 13 years, they drank one extra glass of milk a day. Uh, uh, and found increased rates of ovarian and breast cancer. They ran huge studies in Denmark, Sweden, Switzerland, where they drink a lot of milk, found the uh, cancer rates are much, much, uh, much uh, higher. Interesting. Prostate cancer risk is the same as a breast cancer ri uh, risk. Uh, it goes up uh, with uh, dairy consumption, whether it's cheese uh, or whether it uh, doesn't matter. Let's go back to children a little bit here. Uh, in the American Academy of Pediatrics, 2005, they said the in increased consumption of dairy uh, increases the uh, uh, cancer rates. Adults, m m many times this is manifested in the children as adults because of the hormone effects at a younger age. Uh, they may start menstruation uh, uh, at a younger age. Uh, uh, for example, they have higher breast cancer, ovarian cancer rates uh, down the line. It's been well studied. Uh, in, the, in the British Journal of Medicine uh, found uh, that milk consumption does not help bone health. 
It does not help uh, uh, bone health. Uh, and, and the allergies from milk, uh, this is something for me to, me to talk about a little bit, is underdiagnosed. Uh, and, and part of this uh, is due to the, the chemicals from milk and the proteins in milk, uh, lactose intolerance, uh, asthma, ear infections. I know my friend, Dr. Furman, who published a famous book, Eat to Live and End of Diabetes. My name is on it because I reviewed it at the back cover of that. Uh, he is a pediatrician. He, he speaks a great deal how he's been teaching, and Dr. Verulo, too, here in town, pediatrician here, who teaches his patients, children, uh, proper eating. You know, <laughs> you notice the office is getting emptier. The office is getting emptier. A lot of these cases of uh, asthma, ear infections, uh, rashes, obesity, you know what's happening to them and their practices? Going down. Oh, yeah. But, you know, they're very ethical, hardworking guys. Uh, they look at it as a triumph. And I t totally, of course, agree with them. Yeah. They both told me that, uh, that the, uh, the rate of uh, infections they're seeing are going uh, uh, way down when they teach the children how to eat, you know, 80% plant diet, 20% uh, lean meat. And, uh, and I think they all would go along with that, although I think Dr. Marula would even cut out that 20% meat. But I think Dr. Uh, Furman would say that's okay. As long as you're carefully selected, it's organic, not off a farm. Remember, most uh, uh, beef products and most fish are now off a feedlot. Most fish today is out of a pond. So always ask when you order fish, always check to see if it came from the ocean because the difference is the, bee, the fish, for example, off a farm, off a farm, uh, organically fed farm where they uh, feed them fatty uh, products uh, and they just want to fatten them up so that, you know, they can sell them. They, they're not eating sardines. Uh, they, they're, not, they're not eating plankton. Uh, those fish, they don't have the good omega-3s, they're full of omega-6s, that the inflammatory fat. So when you're eating fish from a farm, you're inflaming your body. You want the fish from the ocean that has the omega-3s, which are anti-inflammatory. So I always ask the, the, the different restaurants in town, I always ask the waiter, where's the fish from? And believe me, you'd be surprised uh, uh, where the fish is from in some of the fanciest restaurants in town. Oh yeah, they know I know. And, uh, and uh, they know I know, and I ask. They'll change. Enough of us ask, they will change. The price difference isn't that big. I think it's sort of determined by how much they love you. You know, I love you, so I'm find it, finding out for you. I take these, these restaurants on about it, uh, and because I think you know, it's your health. So, and these allergies are way underdiagnosed, uh, uh, and uh, uh, many infections, asthma, allergic attacks are, are due to uh, uh, milk. Uh, and uh, cow's milk is a, a cause, is the most common cause of an allergic reaction in a child, actually. Yeah. For, from rashes to diarrhea to stomach upset, you name it. Dr. Spock, you know, famous pediatrician, we don't know, hear about him much today because, you know, he died a number of years ago. But he wrote a very famous book. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and he uh, was against uh, drinking uh, a great deal of milk. Again, make up your own mind. I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm just quoting these people. Uh, and uh, believe me, as a kid, I, I uh, drank it too. So I, I didn't know these things. I just know more now. And he spoke a great deal about intolerable blood loss, allergies, indigestion, type 1 diabetes, yeah, biggest source of dietary fat. That's a real problem. I mean, uh, if your child is slightly awake, for Pete's sake, cut the milk out. That alone might do it. You know, watch the wheat products uh, a bit uh, uh, and the sugary products. Remember I said the most fattening thing there is the fructose in sugar. Sucrose is half glucose and half fructose. Learn about fructose because it's metabolized differently in the liver. It's not metabolized in the blood. It's metabolized in the liver. And, uh, and, and, it, it, and it causes insulin resistance, and it's converted to very low density LDL. So you want to know about how much fructose are you taking in a day. And, and, uh, and, uh, and you don't want to be, for example, eating 10 uh, pieces of fruit because you're eating, getting a lot of fructose. You know, three pieces makes no difference because of fiber. Uh, but uh, uh, but uh, there's, there's fructose in, uh, in fruit, but very healthy, you know, at least three pieces a day because of all the vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals. 
the 25,000 phytochemicals, the enzymes of your body, their interaction, the vitamins and minerals and the, and the phytochemicals, the interaction, their rainbow, their symphony, uh, their mosaic of interaction is where your health is at. That's where your health is located. Our bodies uh, have not changed much in evolution. The evolutionary changes in our bodies are 0.0004% every 20,000 years. Our bodies haven't changed, but in 10,000 years, we've had a revolution in what we're eating, domestication of animals, the, the, the wheat products that we're growing. Wheat products have been genetically modified. You know, wheat used to be this tall. Yeah, used to be this tall. You know how tall wheat is today? It's this tall. It's about 18 inches tall. Maybe a couple of feet at, at best. It has been genetically modified. And it was done in 1948 uh, by Dr. Borlaug, B-O-R-L-A-U-G-H, at the Rockefeller Institute outside Mexico City, where they put it there because it had two seasons and the world was starving. So they wanted to figure out a way to increase yield of wheat. Uh, and he did. He genetically changed it but he never tested in humans, never tested in humans. And it was sent all across the world, and that's the wheat we're growing today. But the trouble is that that wheat has in it amylopectin A, amylopectin A, which hits the bloodstream and acts like pure sugar. Maybe you may still have the coverings on that wheat, but it'll raise a sugar bang over like that uh, and, uh, and heads for the liver and makes fat. And you get a fatty liver, and you, you get you get sick from that. And then and then uh, the uh, protein uh, in uh, wheat, uh, some people are allergic to it. Uh, uh, one in 133 people, the gluten, uh, uh, have celiac disease. One in 133 people have celiac disease, but seven times as many are gluten sensitive, and they have all sorts of symptoms where your body is reacting. Uh, uh, to it, uh, but it's not the more advanced celiac disease, but gluten sensitivity, seven times more common. The thing I found, uh, the reason I became incident, you know, after all, I'm a neurosurgeon, but I do a lot of, you know, uh, nutrition books, pain books, things I write uh, on Amazon, incidentally. Yes, Cashman, Amazon, you can see about 15 books I've read, and I'm writing a couple more um, uh, right now, uh, uh, Hicksville Hospital asked me to give a talk to them, part of my job, a reference on gluten. So I knew something about it, but now I know a lot about it, and I find it's way underdiagnosed. Uh, and it, many illnesses are off of gluten, uh, and, 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 and they be obscure symptoms. They're not always just in the gut. Uh, with celiac disease, a third of the people are overweight, not underweight. Type 2 diabetics, a lot of them have uh, gluten sensitivity, and we need to check it. Part of the biometrics, you know, your, your lipid profile, your CRP, your homocysteine, your blood sugar, your biometrics. Uh, I suggest uh, maybe ask your doctor to, to get a, a gluten panel and gluten sensitivity. The gluten sensitivity, hardly anybody checks for that. I caught somebody re recently at Starbucks who for 30 years has been having belly pain, uh, eczema, all sorts of rashes, all sorts of things. Uh, and uh, uh, never, never had a gluten test, <laughs> and uh, I had him run his gluten sensitivity. He stopped eating, stopped eating wheat. Guess what happened? His 30 years of belly pain gone. So uh, kind of keep that in mind. That's that's something that's some, something new, and 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 medicine hasn't qu quite caught up to it. I think that's just my opinion. I could be, you know, I could, uh, could be wrong about it. But boy, I know a lot about the subject. I was considering all the research I did that I think. This is something we need to uh, uh, consider. Uh, uh, and so uh, uh, people can have uh, celiac uh, disease, Crohn's disease, for example, has a higher association also with milk products. Every case of Crohn's disease uh, is related to milk products, but a certain percent are. So to cut out milk, if you have Crohn's disease as a try, I think is a, is a good uh, 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 thing. Uh, uh, and uh, SIDS, for example, you know, the sudden infant death syndrome, uh, some of that has been thought uh, could be related uh, to milk allergy, a reaction to it, and uh, a child dies. That's been studied, 
there's a, some relationship. In any case, uh, just some relationship. It's an anaphylactic reaction, allergic reaction. People can have allergies and die from it, obviously. We all know that, bee stings, for example. So uh, it's important to keep that in mind uh, uh, also. Uh, and then we already talked about eczema, ear infections, uh, colic. Uh, let's speak a little bit uh, at this point about osteoporosis. Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, and we think we get to drink milk to avoid osteoporosis. Uh, I, I think there's an excellent discussion of that in Michael Moss's book, Salt, uh, uh, Sugar, and Fat. Great discussion there on osteoporosis in there, as well as in, in Joe Kean's book, Whitewash. Very good uh, discussion on osteoporosis in there. Uh, and it is actually thought uh, that meat products uh, make our uh, uh, blood uh, acidic, make, a, make us uh, uh, has acidic, and we need to be slightly alkaline. Uh, and, uh, uh, and when this happens, when this happens, uh, it leaches calcium out of the bones to make the pH normal in our body, which is very important. You can't live it if the pH is off very much. Uh, uh, that needs to be normal. So the leaching of calcium uh, out of the, uh, the uh, tubercular uh, of your bones will cause osteoporosis. Uh, and so meat eaters uh, have a much higher rate of osteoporosis, something to, to keep in mind. Uh, and uh, the, uh, what are the most common osteoporotic fractures? Uh, before age 60, it's the wrist. But after age 60, 65 or so, especially in women, uh, it's the hips. 340,000 a year. Yeah. 700,000 vertebral fractures, uh, vertebral fractures. I have seen, even in my practice, the years of neurosurgery, people coming to see me with pain, that have spontaneous fractures uh, of the pelvis, of the uh, tailbone, they think you have a disc or back problem, turns out you have an osteoporotic uh, fracture. Uh, and, uh, and as this calcium is leached out of the bones, it's leached out of the bones because your, your uh, blood chemistry uh, is off, then also your muscle atrophy because there isn't as much to, to uh, need it because your bones are thinner. Uh, uh, and so you're getting weaker also. So um, I recommend highly uh, everyone not to consume so much meat products, especially because of the fat contents, the IGF contents, the cancer contents, uh, and uh, uh, meat products. If you eat meat seven days a week, uh, you're going to get diabetes, heart disease, vascular disease, uh, osteoporosis. There are exceptions. Uh, certainly there, ex there are exceptions. But I think exercise is important. You know, I'm not exactly 39 years old, and, and, and I take a 30-minute walk every day. I have more time now since I'm the wellness director versus, and, and I uh, lift weights, use the treadmill probably uh, an hour a day. So I'm exercising an hour and a half a day. Most people wouldn't have time for that, but, but, it's, but for me, it's a habit. Uh, even when I was a bit busy neurosurgeon, I played tennis three nights a week, and and lifted weights, you know, three, day, three days a week. Not the real heavy stuff. I'm talking about some light stuff just to keep uh, uh, physically fit. And I recommend that to people to avoid uh, uh, osteoporosis. So to, to uh, uh, summarize this a bit, a bit, I think I want you to educate yourself, participate in your health care. You know, wellness, I'm a wellness director, number one on there, frankly, is participate. The new health care paradigm is you must participate in your health care. Number two, uh, frankly, is what you eat is very, uh, very important. And number three uh, uh, is, is exercise. And number four, you must learn the mind-body connection. How you think uh, uh, is uh, uh, critical. And practice some stress reduction. And I'll tell you honestly, we can laugh a little here if you like, but <laughs> if you see me walk in the morning, my half hour walk, you know what I'm doing while I'm walking? I'm doing some Tai Chi for relaxation. That's hand movements the whole time. So I call it walking Qigong, uh, walking Tai Chi. It's relaxing. On Sunday, 
to go show you how, how people really could love that. I, I made a house call, I had some time on a friend's mother who uh, had a bit of a problem uh, uh, with long-term use of a narcotic because of, she had, had metastatic breast cancer one time, but now that's not come back and, and she's a little heaven on the medicine four days a week uh, uh, laying in bed. Uh, and uh, uh, while I was visiting uh, her, I, I had to visualize uh, uh, exercise, and you know, I taught her a little minor maneuvers uh, of uh, Tai Chi, which is a matter really of circles and slow hand movements uh, and a very uh, uh, calming, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and I taught her some of that, uh, and, uh, uh, and visualize a future. If it's going to happen, it's how you think, okay? I told her, get up a little more, go shopping get involved with maybe dance in place, dance in place, whatever. And, and I have a phone call from her uh, son yesterday. Uh, and uh, he said, Mom, get, get up the next day, which was unusual, uh, uh, made uh, breakfast, uh, told her daughter that she was going to have her hair done uh, that afternoon. And in, in, in two days, she wanted to go shopping. <laughs> okay. So what I'm saying is, uh, so she's participating in healthcare. She's visualizing a, 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 a better life uh, uh, for for ourselves. So uh, in today's uh, medical care, I, I think it's it's changing. You know, we have a new healthcare law, uh, uh, and and uh, wellness. Uh, you, you may be so confused with it and think it's just a god awful thing at the moment. It seems to look like that, but there are things in there about wellness, uh, and uh, and and I think they maybe start paying. Uh, which they should. I'm not sure a certain that's in there, but, but I think all health insurances should cover a wellness aspect that you could go to the Y or species or anytime fitness or, the, or any place uh, or at the hospital thing uh, and pay for wellness. We, should, we need to do some every day as best as possible. Like I said, if you can't exercise, uh, dance in place, <laughs> okay. Uh, and, uh, but I hope you read some of these materials here on the subject we spoke today about uh, uh, dairy products, uh, cheese um, uh, and milk, and, and you may not like what you're reading, uh, but you know, if you're having a weight problem or your children having a weight problem, but it isn't just that, it's the hormones, uh, the industrial complex, and, 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 uh, and I'm, I'm highly concerned, and it's in these books that, especially if you have to read uh, uh, salt, uh, sugar, and fat, the influence of industry and pharmacy and, and lobbying and money uh, and what you're eating uh, 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 is, is, is shameful. It's shameful. You got to do your own. You have to do your own uh, participating and uh, and uh, reading about it. So, what do I recommend in terms of eating generally? I mean, I have my own food pyramid. Uh, it's at Trine University. It's going to be at IT University. I think I Purdue is looking at it. Uh, on this period of mine, cruciferous vegetables at the bottom. They're high in. They're high in uh, calcium, vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals. Uh, I think you should uh, eat some, be some beans every week. I think you, you could uh, certainly eat fruit, not 10 pieces of fruit, but three, four pieces of uh, 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 fruit every day. Uh, an ounce of nuts a day, I think, is reasonable. They starve off the uh, uh, appetite. And if you're going to eat whole grain, 100% whole grain, not partial grain, three grain, four grain, 100% whole grain. You don't want to eat a lot of wheat products because well, I told you about the amylopectin A uh, 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 and uh, it go, causing a rapid increase. If you eat 10 pieces of bread, you're going to have a problem. Uh, so I want you to watch the amount of eat, limited. Let me tell you something about eat. It's something called Ezekiel bread that's made from sprouts. Uh, I, I've been eating that lately. It tastes very good. It's a good substitute for white bread and different kind of bread. Yeah, to me, it tastes very good put a thin layer or something on it, almond butter or something, it's very delicious. I think that's a real secret, Ezekiel bread. Actually, that's part of the Daniel, you know, that's a Daniel plant. Ezekiel is part of that. I think the Reverend Warren's onto something there. I'm not uh, pushing his church, I'm pushing his diet plan. I think he's a neat guy for doing it. Uh, and he's got all his parishioners uh, uh, attending little classes on proper eating, and, and, uh, and uh, I, I like reading that, that book. My book's available on Amazon about 15 of them, uh, and, 
uh, all about health, but health and wellness from pain to probably eating to stress <laughs> to motivation. I mean, uh, and uh, I just finished one on diagnosing prediabetes extremely early. So you don't get diabetes, you don't get into prediabetes. That would solve a tremendous amount of uh, uh, disease. That'll be out in about uh, uh, six uh, uh, weeks. I think that'll be interesting, uh, very interesting uh, 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 reading. Uh, other people who written a lot about the proper eating, that the books I like, Dean Ornish, uh, Esseltine, Cleveland Clinic, Forks Over Knives, his latest book, Dr. McDougall, a uh, very good Franklin House, uh, The 30-Day Miracle. He thinks he can reverse type 2 diabetes in 30 days. I agree. If you eat the right food, you can reverse it 30 to 60 days. If you're right. he's, he's been doing it 30 years. I, I, I agree with him. On page 57 of his book, he lists what you should do. Same thing I've been teaching. And I read it after I uh, had already decided uh, on what the proper eating is. And I attend the conferences of all these uh, well-known uh, people. I think uh, uh, President Clinton, who's lost 20 pounds, who I met with a few years ago, handed him a book, and he read it. And, uh, and it was uh, uh, Dean Ornish's uh, book and, and Esseltine's book. And you look at him lately, 20 pounds down. You know, he had heart disease, so he, he really had to do it. And, and he indeed uh, did do it. And I have a picture of his visit, uh, and a, a very uh, uh, interesting. Uh, and uh, so uh, uh, proper eating is very important. Food is medicine. Food is medicine. And if you eat the wrong food, it's a poison. It's, it's a poison. Sugar is a toxin. Why? Because it affects the dopamine circuitry of your body. Cigarettes, alcohol, believe me, marijuana are no different, uh, gambling, all these things affect the same serotonin dopamine circuitry. If you eat uh, fat or sugar, your brain just lights up like with cocaine. Uh, and uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's as bad as cocaine. Dr. Isles happened to have that on the show last night while I was working at Planet Fitness. I saw that he was on speaking about that, but believe me, sugar is close to cocaine. And, and I have people saying that, that it is because it, if you get addicted to it, you gotta have it. It makes us feel good. Uh, uh, and believe me, it's made me feel good. Uh, so at home, we need to have some snacks ready. You gotta make a list uh, of snacks that, that are healthy. You can't be having donuts around. The reason you can only eat, if you had a dozen donuts, and you, you can't just eat one. The reason being fructose. Remember I said fructose? Fructose does not, fructose corn syrup does not, when it hits the bloodstream, does not increase the insulin level, so it doesn't turn your appetite off. It goes to the liver, then you eat the next one, because your appetite has not been reduced. It's because of the fructose. So um, uh, Google fructose, read a lot about it. This, this is the real enemy uh, of, of our health. Fat isn't good, especially if you're overweight. But, but uh, the essential fatty acids, omega-3 and, and some omega-6, we need it for good health. It's a membrane uh, of our cells of our body. Uh, uh, our cells of our brain uh, are uh, uh, made uh, from omega-3s and omega-6s. So we, we need some fat, essential fatty acids. You, don't, you want to be eating a 0% fat diet, you know, 10 15%. And who can gauge the percentages? Uh, but to become, you know, mainly a, a plant eater, uh, make some soups at home. Uh, you make some soup Sunday night, you can eat it for the next uh, uh, three days, for example. It's a time saver for busy people. Actually, uh, good food is not that much more expensive than bad food. Matter of fact, my friend Dr. Varula, a pediatrician, would say it's actually cheaper. And he's walked me through. Uh, uh, some big stores, and he proved it to me he's actually right. But when I read the literature, the good food at best would, would uh, cost you an extra 50 bucks a month. For some people, that's a problem, no doubt about it. A uh, dollar and a half a day, it, it, difference between uh, good and bad food in the literature. But he showed me that you can buy things in bulk, uh, actually, good food uh, indeed is cheaper. And look at all the money you sell that you would save in health care. I mean, so uh, eating well actually is better. You won't miss as much work. Uh, uh, you'll be a, a healthier person. You won't have to go to the doctor. Uh, and uh, so uh, in summary, 
what I'm, sa what I'm saying, uh, Lufen, medical uh, 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 wellness director, uh, is to try to give you some advice, make up your own mind. This is just my opinion. It's not the opinion of, any, of, of anyone else. Read this book. Participate in your health in your healthcare. We are the best of scientific medicine available at Lutheran Hospital. And look, they turn to me for, for wellness teaching. You got to give them credit. Uh, they're they're thinking wellness uh, prevention, uh, uh, wellness uh, treatment, and after you're treated uh, to, to keep you uh, healthy. It's a whole circle of of healthcare. What, what a wonderful thing. Uh, what a wonderful thing. We have to give the, the system uh, credit for that. Thanks a lot for listening. Uh, I've got more shows uh, 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 coming up uh, all, year, all year long. And I've done it for three years and I just, just love it. And I know uh, a number of you watch it uh, regularly. Uh, uh, you uh, watch our shows. And again, look at Amazon if you get uh, things you want to read that I've, uh, I've written. Uh, uh, you're going to be a very healthy person. Yeah, you're going to be a very healthy person, and uh, uh, we we love you all, and uh, uh, I hope you watch our uh, next show. I think the next one coming up, uh, I, I'm I'm planning uh, to uh, speak on salt, the effects of salt on the human body, uh, a, a, a very uh, interesting thing about high blood pressure and. And next year, we're going to speak a great deal more about exercise and maybe uh, Tai Chi and Qi Gong for relaxation. I'll teach you how to do it. Uh, I do it, as you notice. I hope you catch me some morning walking outside my house around the ponds uh, doing it. I'm going to give you a good laugh. I think the birds think it's funny because uh, they seem to follow me around. <laughs> I love you all. Thanks so much uh, uh, for listening. Have a nice holiday, incidentally. Love is the answer. Love is the answer. And uh, I think spirituality is important. And uh, uh, have a great day. <laughs>